Hey, good morning, YouTubers. Welcome to uh, back to Sweet As RV, and we're uh, starting our our morning uh, here in Taupo. Uh, I have spent some time down, of course, in Mochiopa there with my parents, and uh, up here with Jude's mum. And we decided to go walkabout. And uh, one of the first places to start the morning is the, the beautiful uh, view here, um, just at the southern end of um, Taupo. And uh, we're overlooking Lake Taupo, and in behind there is. Uh, little island there and um, Pihanga and then in behind that you've got the mountains of uh, Ruapahu, Tongarua and Narahoe and uh, normally you get a very nice crisp morning and you get to see the maybe the odd bit of snow on the mountains but today there's a little bit of cloud cover back down there it's oh, 2.2 degrees it's a little cool and um, but it's getting up to around about 14 15 degrees and hopefully this cloud will burn off and it'll be nice so I'm dressed warmly at the moment but I've got to change your clothes when it gets a little bit warmer. Um, just this little spot that I'm standing at, you see a few little rocks around. It's an interesting little uh, spot down here on the south of Taupo and there's, there's a number of little sites. There's another one up on, uh, uh, they call it a Taupo View Hill up the way. We might be able to see it. I'm, I want to take you up and show you the giant bike. But um, yeah, these rocks are sort of um, what they were called back in the early days there, an open air university. And uh, it's believed to be uh, the teaching uh, of uh, the cyclic uh, astronomy. Some people call them like um, standing stones and they give you things like um, your true norths and your solstice and yeah. I don't know too much about the history of it but uh, it's just interesting. Some people have done some research and found that they, uh, they all line up to particular um, astronomical type um, events. Do I call it astronomical? It's in the astronomy side of things. Anyway, behind me there too, I think you'll see um, Mount Tahara and uh, that is also a, a line-up spot for um, these rocks. And I think that one back there too, the, the, I think they call it like the shark fin or something like that. But anyway, there's a little bit about it in um, Google if you want to look it all up there. So uh, yeah, better get on down the hill and catch up with Jude and we'll go and have a look at our next spot, eh? All right, our next port of call is down the town centre area of uh, Taupo. And we, of course, uh, one of the most uh, photographic spots of Lake Taupo is here at the I Love Taupo sign. And of course that gets to see a, uh, a beautiful view down the lake, of course, to the, uh, the mountains. Uh, just pulling in over behind me here is uh, the, uh, the float plane. And people go out for scenic flights and things. Um, there's a, um, I'll see if we can find it down the marina, there's an old uh, boat, a sailboat and a little steamer. And they go out. Um, there's also a big uh, cat as well. Takes you out and shows you some of the, the beautiful bays of uh, Lake Taupo. And uh, there's an Ironman held here and swim challenges and things like that held here. Great fishing. Um, you get some rainbow trout and uh, we do have brown trout as well, but predominantly rainbow trout out of the lake. Um, been here pretty much as long as I have. This little floating platform out there used as a, a one-hole golf challenge. So uh, you stand on the shore here and uh, get yourself a golf ball and golf club and try and uh, score some prizes. Um, and you can see there too, some kayakers out on the water. So yeah, lovely end. This is the uh, kind of like the northern end of the lake. And uh, of course, Turangi, Mochopa, where I was down there earlier, that's down the southern end. And uh, some nice little bays around and uh, homes nestled in those bays. Next little spot we've come down to is the uh, Taupo Marina. It's a beautiful marina set down here with some, some lovely pleasure boats. Um, down in this little neck of the corner, there's a, um, a huge amount of um, charter boats available. Uh, White Striker here, and K2 over there, Chris Jolly's uh, Outdoors over there. Um, the Ernest Kemp, it's a beautiful little uh, steamboat. And over here, this little interest. And then there's some big, big boats here too. There's the, uh, the big cat here too.
The next little interesting fact on Taupo would be it hosts a number of events, as I said, a, uh, an Ironman and swims and runs and bits and pieces. But one other um, real important thing here in Taupo, and I've taken part on two occasions, the giant bike. It's uh, home of the Taupo Cycle Challenge. Excuse the noise on the road here. Um, it's been going for 45 years, so a long time. Started back in 1977 and had um, 26 riders that thought for fun we'll cycle around the lake. So the lake, you can see in the distance here where Jude is, um, it's about 160 kilometres around the lake. Um, let me see, it now has nearly 7,000 riders. So humble beginnings in 1977 of 26 riders, now 7,000. Even during uh, the COVID period, I think when it, it lost a bit of um, popularity, it was about 5,000, but uh, pretty popular. They do a number of events, they do the 160K uh, cycle, but then some guys uh, have got the opportunity to ride it twice, so 320Ks around, so uh, pretty good. And they also um, bring it in with other cycle events for mountain biking challenges and things like that too, so huge amount of tracks around here in Taupo to go and enjoy. So. Uh, yeah, look it up one day if you're really keen to do a cycle challenge around Lake Taupo. It, uh, it can bring a tear to the eye when you've uh, gone all the way around and uh, it's a good achievement. Port of Call, we're at Aratiatia Rapids. So the car's just parked up here. Judy's going to take a uh, vantage point from the top of the rapids, and I'm going to go for a little walk down this track and uh, set myself up down the bottom of the rapids, and we'll see if we can get a good combination of the release of water from the, uh, the top. So uh, we'll fill in a little bit of information while we're down there. Well, there you have it, Aratiatia, the rapids, aren't they cool? It's about the second time I've seen them, so it never ceases to amaze me. Um, 16 kilometres out of Taupo, you can bike to it, you can walk to it, you can drive to it. Um, 
And if you heard in the background, you can even take a jet boat to it. Did a little famous uh, Hamilton spin at the uh, end of the uh, the lake here, and uh, they usually give a little spiel about the uh, Harateatea Rapids, and then power on back up towards the the Hooker Falls, which might be our next call. Um, so it, it was um, the first hydro apparently built on New Zealand's longest river here in uh, the North Island, um, and what we saw there was at least uh, sixty five thousand liters per second coming over the spillway so pretty cool an interesting little fact about the Aratiotia rapids for you hobbit fans lord of the rings it was the hobbit scene where bilbo baggins was rescuing the dwarfs that escaped in a barrel and they were floating down that section of the rapids i think because of safety standards they didn't throw dwarfs off there in barrels. Um, it was all digitally done later on, but they floated the barrels down and uh, down there and they filmed it. So uh, there you go, a little bit of Hobbit um, trivia. <laughs> anyway, I've got to take this uh, walk back to Jude and hopefully she got some good footage at the top end. All right, see you at the next destination. So just a little more info on our tier tier. It was the first of Mercury's nine hydro power stations on the Waikato River, about 13 kilometers downstream from the Lake Taupo. Our tier tier is largely a run of the river station passing water released from Lake Taupo down to Ahukuri. Our tier tier literally means a series of pegs stuck in a steep descent in a zigzag pattern to make climbing easier. So work began in 1959, the lake was filled in March 1964 and the station was commissioned in time to prevent an expected electricity shortage. It's going to be quite noisy through here, so I'll try and uh, get my camera as close as I can, but there we have it. From there, coming from there. We're looking at uh, some 220 litres per second running through this little gap. It's the Hooker Falls. A little bit more than down at Aratiatia. And noisy and wild. Believe it or not, some people shoot these falls in a kayak. So uh, if this part don't get you, the, the, uh, the waterfall at the far end, well, got myself a bit of an advantage point here. It's quite busy here today. Lots of people around. So that's the top end coming from Lake Taupo. And there's a beautiful little lodge up there called Hooker Lodge, very uh, prestigious. So uh, we're going to have a look at the bottom end of uh, the Hooker Falls. I hope you managed to hear me through all that rush of water. All right. Here we go. We're at the bottom of the falls. Um, I think it's a fall of around about 10, 15 metres. I think the whole thing's about uh, 100 metres or 150 odd metres long. And yeah, that's the flow coming out of Lake Kapa on the, uh, through down the Waikato River and down to the, uh, the, the Aratiotia Rapids. Thunderous amount of power. And as I say, I've heard of a couple of fire could shoot it. <laughs> oh, wicked. And a lot of people come and visit this place, up to, you know, over 100,000 people a year. So it's a popular spot, eh, Anna? What do you reckon? Definitely a popular spot. Yeah, must okay. put on your list of places to visit in uh, Cabo. Yeah, we'll right. list.
I'm in my home little town here. It's called Mochoipa. It's on the, uh, the edge of Lake Taupo, which is right here. And um, it's in between uh, well, Turangi is to the south and uh, Taupo is to the north. And uh, little headland out there is uh, Mochoipa Headland. And uh, I'm with my parents. Got a nice uh, boat in the marina here, which we're going to go out and uh, give it a run and uh, try our luck at a bit of trout fishing. So, fingers crossed. So, uh, come along for the journey. Let's see if we can show you a nice New Zealand trout. Oh, great. Just got one. You got one, Dean. Uh, oh, weight yeah, was off, there. but. Yeah, that one. Oh, this is off somewhere. <laughs> He's falling the bloody net around. Oh. There he goes. He's away. Oh well, back from our little fishing excursion. Sorry to say, no fish to show, no fishing action really. It was a little, uh, little on the breezy side for our choice of technique, which was uh, jigging, especially for a, a slightly larger boat. It was to sail a little bit too fast, but uh, it was really nice being out there, and we had a really good feed. And uh, yeah, blew the cobwebs out. So a little bit of practice and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get back out again and uh, some nicer um, water conditions tomorrow or the next day. So uh, yeah, it was a nice little outing. Hopefully catch up with some footage next time. Alrighty. Give us a thumbs up. Got a there you go. Slop that all over Mum's back. Yeah. <laughs> well, believe it or not, this is uh, day two. It was a lot calmer out there today, and we did quite well. Um, we managed uh, managed landing three fish to the boat. Two nice ones, which we kept and uh, one small one which I got put back and damn it I missed a few others um, I had uh, one take the hook and I had another two hits that never stuck so uh, yeah if you take that into uh, account a pretty damn good successful day so trout for tea um, I will show you the trout but they've been in a, a fish bag for a few hours now and they're not really the uh, pretty as a picture <laughs> But uh, yeah, just filling in, it was a good day out on Lake Taupo today. Loved it. Here we go, you guys. Would have been up there earlier, but mum and dad insisted. Yeah, it's just that we smoked our fish. Smoked your fish. And we had aged rum. Let's keep the secret recipe out of the picture. 
untouched by human hands. No humans were involved in the cooking of this fish.